Only if you have been on another planet would you not be aware that Donald Trump's deal of the century for peace between Israel and the Palestinian Arabs was finally released. And so I wondered, what might the world learn from it? Let's take a look. The main difference between this plan and everything else before it is that it implicitly acknowledges that the root cause for the absence of peace over all these decades has not been Israeli settlements, Israeli intransigence, Israeli apartheid, or Israeli anything else. Unlike all the previous proposals, which place the onus for success on Israel doing lots of things and the Palestinians doing nothing much, this time the formula demands that the Palestinians start taking positive steps towards building a genuine peace. This is different because since the time of the Oslo Accords, the Palestinians did nothing, yet the world kept asking Israel for more and more concessions. So hopefully the world is learning that it's time this Palestinian racket gets altered. And unlike previous plans, this time they have been given four years to do it, otherwise the deal expires. And this is a game changer as it confronts their fake claims of wanting peace but doing nothing about it. This will expose them for the liars that they really are. What might else have the world have learned? Certainly, the world now understands that with every proposal for peace in the region, from 1948 until today, the Jews have always said yes, and the Palestinian Arabs have always said no. And just in case the message didn't strike home, PA terrorist-in-chief Mahmoud Abbas declared, we say a thousand times no, no and no to the deal of the century. The world has learned that the 1967 Green Line was never intended to be a final border between two states. It was simply an armistice line that existed when fighting ceased in 1967. There is nothing sacred about it, as the Palestinians have been claiming for 50 years. The world has also learned that this deal makes it clear that any Palestinian, quote, refugees would go to the future state of Palestine, not Israel. Their sneaky aim of destroying Israel by flooding it with Arab refugees has now been called out. Jerusalem has for centuries been the central focus of Jewish history, with virtually no significance to any Arab history. There was no way that Israel was ever going to give up half of this ancient city to a bunch of tribal gangsters such as the PA. The deal of the century says that Jerusalem is unequivocally Jewish and should remain so. Unlike previous wishy-washy plans, President Trump firmly demands that the Palestinians walk away from violence and terrorism, recognize Israel as a Jewish state, disarm Hamas, and start building a functioning society. And Abbas said, not interested. Despite what the leftist mainstream media has to say, the suburbs, I won't call them settlements, that have sprung up in Judea and Samaria since 1967, are not illegal under international law, and never have been. President Trump's deal makes this point loud and clear, and understands that Israel is entitled to apply sovereignty there in the near future. Similarly, the Jordan Valley is militarily, militarily strategic for Israel's security, and the world should pay careful attention and learn that this is a reality that will not change. Yes, there is a lot to the deal of the century for the world to learn. At this stage, the Jewish world is relieved that for the first time, a proposal has been presented that acknowledges the right of Jews to live in their ancestral homeland and squarely addresses the Palestinian rejectionism that has had the world con for the last 50 years. Abbas keeps saying that the Palestinian rights are not for sale and continues to propagate the lie that they are an indigenous people whose land is being occupied by colonizing Jews. It's always been fake news and the world is learning that the only plan that the Palestinian Arabs will accept is one that advances the eradication of Israel. Only now, this has been called out by the Trump strategy. 
A carrot and stick approach is the brilliance of Donald Trump's deal of the century. And so to entice them, there are also 50 billion reasons to now accept it. But they won't, of course. There is also an Australian angle that the Australian Jewish Association is presenting. And AJA President David Adler discussed it recently on the top rating Outsiders program on Sky News. If you didn't see it, it follows immediately after these comments. This is Alan Friedman for the Australian Jewish Association. Of course, of course. <laughs> okay, now I'm delighted to have joining us again on Outsiders. He's the head of the Australian Jewish Association, the AGAA. You can find them on Facebook. Um, Dave Adler is a regular on Outsiders. Glad to have him back on the show. We want to talk about a couple of things. One is Dave Hurley, the, our Governor General, with your taxpayers, not only attending the uh, Holocaust uh, commemorations, which I mentioned, but then running across the road and... Uh, playing Tutsis with Mohammed Abbas, the head of the Palestinian organization. And uh, also we'll talk about Trump's plan. Dave, welcome back to Outsiders. How are you? Uh, thanks, Rowan. And uh, it's great to be on the uh, uh, best news commentary panel in Australia. That's it. Excellent. Well briefed. Well briefed. Fantastic. Um, now, Dave, first of all, just uh, before we get into uh, Donald Trump's plans for mm -hmm. Israel and Palestine, just quickly tell us what you thought about our Governor General uh, not only going to the Holocaust commemorations, but then rushing off to see the Palestinian Authority. Uh, look, this is the juxtaposition on this visit is frankly outrageous. I need to make the point that we have a lot of respect for the Office of Governor General, but it seems he was extremely badly advised. It's appropriate for him to go and join the commemoration for the International Holocaust Remembrance Day, which coincided with the 75th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz, but then to go and visit a person who is a known Holocaust denier, who uses Nazi-type propaganda to generate hatred, and actually pays those who kill Jews. I mean, that's nuts. Uh, and we don't know exactly who gave him that advice and set up the meeting, but uh, uh, it looked very bad. And well, I would, I would... I would yeah. suspect it would be, be our delightful DFAT Department exactly. of Foreign yeah. Affairs. Rita? That, that I would suspect the same. Um, I want to ask mm. you also about Prince Charles's comments after he attended this same uh, uh, event and the fact that New Zealand sent nobody. Uh, do those two things concern you? Absolutely. Um, I mean, Prince Charles, uh, as you have commented uh, repeatedly, he's become a bit of a leftist political activist. And on this issue, uh, you know, it, it's consistent with pattern. Um, and New Zealand, uh, we learn that uh, their equivalent of DFAT, which is MFAT, uh, the Ministry for Foreign Affairs and Trade, uh, actually mucked around with the invitation that they had received from Israel for some months. And by the time they actually presented it to somebody who might be able to represent the country, it was too late. Uh, now, David, we've discussed this in the past, uh, in the last couple of years, you've done some terrific work along with, uh, I believe, uh, Pauline Hanson and others, and this show, I would argue, uh, getting some $10 million taken of taxpayers' money that was going to the Palestine, uh, to the United Nations kind of yeah. education of um, kids in the uh, Palestinian territories. Uh, we're still giving $43 million. I just want to play you a little clip that, which was taken of a kid kids in uh, Gaza or in the Palestinian authorities talking about what they are being taught. Now just remember, they are being taught yep. this with money from Australian taxpayers uh, and, and elsewhere obviously around the world, $43 million from us. Just have a quick listen. بيحكوا لنا عن اليهود انهم هدول شمناح وهدول بقتلوا قاعدين بشبابنا بيحكوا لنا بيحكوا 
And there they are saying, David, that they would like, they've been taught, basically. As I said earlier, today, uh, you know, it's not the kids' fault, it's the people pulling the strings of the kids, and these kids are being taught with our money uh, to hate Jews and to desire to, to kill them. Your thoughts? Uh, look, this is outrageous. Uh, UNRWA, which runs uh, the schools for uh, much of the uh, Palestinian Arab children, uh, is identified as a, a problem by many countries. Uh, the US has withdrawn funds. Uh, a number of other countries have suspended uh, or withdrawn funds. And we actually think that it's high time that Australia did so. Uh, the worst aspect of our whole foreign aid program is when you give money that does harm. Absolutely. And in this case, our $43 million is proven uh, not to have assisted peace, but to actually be actively harming the prospects of peace by now just, being uh, used to incite hatred. Absolutely. Now, just we've only got a couple of minutes, David, so just mm. quickly talking about peace, what did you make of Donald Trump's uh, Israel-Palestine plan? We'll put a map up and you can talk us through it. Okay, well, it's, it's, I've got it here. It's a comprehensive plan. It's 181 pages. Uh, it deals with the whole spectrum of issues. Uh, I think it's important to understand Australia is not a major player in this plan. The major players are the US, Israel, Egypt, Jordan, some Arab countries. So we've given a lot of strategic thought as to what Australia can do to assist peace. Um, we've seen violent rejectionism by the leaders of the Palestinian Arabs. So we've already touched on the major thing that Australia should do. We give $43 million in the budget to Palestinian territories. Uh, and we have a moral question now. Should we continue to fund a regime that rejects peace and embraces terror? And obviously we're saying no. So Australia should suspend that $43 million aid until the Palestinian leadership demonstrates that it's prepared to sit at the table and negotiate peace. This plan is very, very generous to them. Uh, and there's a lot of... Imp it's been thought out very well. Uh, there are things in it that we don't like that are very concessional from our perspective. But we shouldn't be giving money that props up and incentivises the refusal, the no, no, no. This is the eighth peace plan which they have rejected. And you would... That, that I'll just quickly finish. You would uh, give your... Uh, basically, you're giving the thumbs up to the plan with some, uh, some doubts over some areas, but you think that the Palestinian... We should not be supporting the Palestinians if they don't support the plan. Correct? A hundred percent. Fantastic. 100%. David Adler, thanks so much for coming on, head of the Australian Jewish Association. We've got lots more coming up.